Hello and welcome. I am Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka, a program that brings an excellent scientist who has contributed to national and international pool of knowledge. Let me begin by saying that after scientific and industrial revolution, the progress, the development, these were the words which were almost synonym to plundering environment. We thought that we can do anything with environment and we will remain safe. But that consciousness gradually changed around 50s, which is about 60, 70 years back, people started experiencing that the environment, the nature is getting plundered. The nature is unable to take what we are giving it to. And therefore, there was a movement and scientists started devoting their efforts to understand how to save environment. In India, we started studying environment early on. There was a tradition of saving environment. There was a tradition of saving whatever natural property and natural asset we had. And therefore, there was an institute created. Welcome Dr. Kati to this program. Thank you very much. Eureka. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for finding time. Uh, do I call you Dr. Satish? Dr. Satish will be fine. Fine. That will be ideal. Dr. Satish, let us begin from the beginning. You come from a middle class background, not very affluent. Uh, your father had some training in science. Your mother also had training in science. And probably you were more impressed by the mother who was much more creative as far as sciences were concerned. How did you get into this science mode? Fine, as you rightly summarized uh, that uh, I come from a middle class family. Father educated but not to that extent. Mother also had to give up her education. But mother had science in her matriculation and hygiene and public health was a subject that she was also having in the schoolings. See, what has happened, we come from a small town also, where facilities for sanitation were poor, drinking water was a rarity. And uh, what has prompted me to undertake science on a big way is, one, one thing was tradition, because everybody wanted to go for science. That is normally it happens. But mother specifically told me to pursue science, because she believed that solutions to society would come from science only. Oh, right from the beginning, that it, it, was the it, it training was the that training was given that she to you. Told me. You were always a very good student. Exactly. Was it because of uh, the mother or also because of the elder brothers that you had? No, mother was always there. Elder brother was also a, a, a typical role model because he was also into In the high school, science. they became your They became. And in the your, school, your they, role were, models. they were always number one. I was also number one in the school. But I would rate it to that because there was no competition. See, many times it happens that many students who come from different... You always places, felt that there is no competition, it was an exactly. easy the road. The challenge was not coming. See, the whole problem, you know, it, the best has to come out when there are challenges. So it was not coming, but it was coming from within the house. Because if I have skipped my school, my teacher has not asked, but my brother would ask. And when he would ask those questions, they were unsettling. I mean, there, unless you have studied well, you could not answer those questions. So that was something, you know, unknowingly it was happening with me that I was being groomed into to become a good scientist. When you went to college, uh, when uh, did you decide that now I am going to do life science? Exactly. When did you decide that? See, this happened... Uh, because your elder brothers were engineers. Were engineers. This happened in the, in the second year of, uh, first year of my science. And uh, okay. it was also said because I was trying to get the national fellowship which was for basic sciences. It was never for in, uh, engineering sciences. But one thing that I perhaps learned right in the first year of my uh, education in college, that science is not as easy as what it was thought in comparison to what engineering was thought. On the other hand, I find engineering was having application, therefore you can get into mode once you have a treasure of basic science. 
but basic science you need to pursue deep there has to be discovery there has to be th thorough understanding and you don't understand unless you really have got deep into the subject because the subject must be understood with proper application this is what i learned right there dr sir tell me that you have made a very very important statement that doing basic sciences is much more difficult than doing engineering do you also think that doing basic sciences is much more important for a nation than just doing engineering i i would say uh, more in favor of science being a scientist basically that bias will always be there but now since heading an engineering institute i realize how the interface has to be there now science is what you can call it as a software and engineering is translation into an hardware uh, this debate must not come because even if you pursue higher science made with the field of medical sciences health sciences life sciences engineering sciences or environmental sciences unless a product is delivered in the form that it has been envisaged through a proper engineering optimization that science has no value so what we need in engineering but our understanding of the nature also changes our vision to look at the nature our vision to look at yourself and your own society and the solutions mainly come from there which need to be translated see i always tell when my young students come to me and talk to me i always use the word nisargo rakshiti rakshataah meaning if you protect the nature nature protects you there is no bigger engineer than nature the best of the engineering is taught from nature only we are a part of nature the best of the hydraulics you study using studying the hydraulics in the in the body using one pump managing all the circulations nature has taught us so much of recycle re reuses you look at the water cycle we studied we look at the carbon cycle we studied we look at the sulfur cycle we studied these are all cycles meaning that nature does not take any single atom as a waste any single element as a waste it all remains in periodic table and it all part forms the part of a nature every component is useful this is what nature teaches you you are heading at the moment one of the best institutes in the world which is studying and also providing solution to problems of degradation of nature uh, now in this situation when you grew up with the institute and the institute went through a transformation from health institute to a uh, uh, institute environmental institute learning and and uh, doing research in environment environmental engineering in this uh, journey do you think the major shift in consciousness of human being has impacted the institute as well very well said i'll appreciate that because see we started as an institute which was based only on public health the epidemic in delhi on jaundice made csir to institute an institute in nagpur which works on public health 74 when madam indira gandhi came to nagpur and she changed it after her stockholm convention conference address this into an environmental engineering institute the basic necessity of change was to comprehend all components of environment see environment comprises of five basic components atmosphere lithosphere geosphere hydrosphere and a biosphere which are part of it correct and look at the connectivity in all the components everybody is dependent on everybody oxygen you take transport carbon dioxide water you take transport it everything is connected diversity is because of that this is the engineering the most complex model ever projected to us by any engineer and that is nature now when i started my career in neri with a phd which i got a break from csr fellowship i was mostly working on wastewater treatment i'm just trying to take you through the journey and i was thinking that wastewater is all what that it's to be done this is nothing more than that yeah you generate wastewater made be domestic made be industrial treat it and discharge it there was no concept of that water is being wasted because we never thought that water is not plenty it was treated to the effect that it is standard is being met where it has to be discharged in the sewer in the ocean or anywhere else 
From there, when we came to the Environmental Engineering Institute, our total spectrum changed, my perspective changed. What I have thought only water as a component was not only the component, it has impact on soil, it has impact on water body, it has impact on human health and today we are looking at now. And biosphere. And biosphere. Yeah. And I am taking human health as a part of biosphere. We are a part of ecosystem. Right. And we are not respecting the ecosystem. Unless you respect the ecosystem, you cannot be a part of that and you cannot abuse the ecosystem. This is where we studied and learned and that's so where the, the program started. the first part was when we started looking at the nature that it does not regenerate itself unless we stop and halt the kind exactly. of plundering that we are doing. Second was that no molecule should be treated as a waste molecule. Exactly, exactly. Because in between, we thought that we treat the waste and everything will go hunky and dory, everything uh, will be all right. But now today, our understanding of nature is that we cannot treat anything as waste. It has to be utilized. It is resource. And it has to be. Waste is a misplaced word for resource. I would quote it this way because there are many scavengers. The nature is a scavenger. It does recycle that into component back again. But while you are telling that, the nature regeneration process is always on. It is at certain speed. It is how now we are trying to dominate it by an activity which is anti. If the nature is recovering, say for example, the water body runs, purifies through reaeration, through its biota, purifies itself. For an X load, I make the load to 2X to 3X, it will still try to respond. Mm -hmm. But when I make yeah. it to 10X, it then is something it like that I am loading you with 3 meals in 3 hours and I decide you to digest it. It is not possible. This is where we call it as assimilation potential of the environment. The man must respect and understand that there is an assimilation potential with the environment also. This institute or environmental sciences in general are the best example of uh, all the sciences coming together to solve a problem. Very true. Because uh, uh, without understanding of physics, chemistry, environmental sciences cannot be thought of. Similarly, you can't think of environmental sciences without nuclear uh, technologies understanding or space technologies understanding or uh, uh, biosciences, for example. So, unless and until all of them come together, you cannot deal with nature in today's. How is the institute responding it? You, you picked up the lifeline of the institute. The only institute perhaps we can showcase the highest multidisciplinary activity is this institute. We have people from environmental engineering, chemical engineering, electronics engineering, chemistry, botany, zoology, biochemistry, microbiology, including now people from management, physics, mathematics, statistics, environmental science, and I will tell you, any branch of science and engineering finally leads to environment. Nobody can take it away that I am a mechanical engineer and I cannot contribute, he cannot say so. I have got three people inducted in academy as mechanical engineers, transformed them into a professional of environmental engineering and using their knowledge. And environmental sciences are the best example of not only multidisciplinary but transdisciplinary Very approach. True. Very I true. have to take a break. We'll come back soon. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Eureka. We were discussing with Dr. Satish, uh, Director Neri, it, when the institute has to be multidisciplinary, then it has many problems to solve. You take out a lot of time and you have to take out a lot of time for administrative purposes. How do you deal with it? You have published more than 600 papers, in fact, 654 papers or so. Reports. Uh, including reports and on, on impact analysis, which is very, very time consuming based on the researchers. How do you take out time? Uh, so, let me tell you because before I became director, I was uh, heading a division known as environmental impact assessment and risk assessment. Before that, 
I started my career with a engineering division, industrial waste treatment. Then I came to a division known as basic research and training division. And then I came to the division which is impact assessment. See how it evolved from a basic research engineering applications to a comprehensive impact assessment of all components to be impacted by any activity that man or anybody does or nature does. My most of the things have come during that period up to 10. But then after I became director, I had more job on my hand. I have more uh, spectrum to be dealt with. Having a background of biochemistry, with the background of engineering, with the background of impact assessment, I found that all disciplines I can interface easily and I can use them properly to get a synergy out of them. But I believe mostly in now increasing surface area. See hierarchical systems we were working earlier that head, then subordinate, then subordinate, then subordinate. This will only give you through one channel which is not proper. Multiple outputs are required, surface area has to be increased. So I have seen that thing inducting young scientists which are almost now 44 with me out of 110 has given me a base to take them to the surface to contribute. And that is why the, the institute and you personally have been able to work on such varied problem right varied. from Ganga action plan yes. to uh, uh, something on, uh, on, on gas. Treatment technologies, uh, treatment, gas generation, waste gas recycle, everything. Right. Because and also Doon Valley. Exactly. So, working in that area was also how, a... How do you manage a, that? And I will be particularly interested in Ganga Action Plan because that is the buzzword very, very true, very these true. days. And uh, uh, since the beginning you have been involved in that, why did, uh, didn't it work? See, first phase when it was instituted... We started in looking at Ganga. In 1985. As, as, yeah, 1985. 1985. And in 1985, when the project was proposed that we should go in for Ganga cleaning, see, we targeted mostly Ganga as only one source, where we had thought that we will have interceptions only from city sewage that is coming, treat that sewage and allow that treated sewage to go back into Ganga. Since then, the technologies have changed, many things have changed, and instead of targeting only Ganga, we should target the watershed. There are many sources which are coming through various rivers into the holy Ganga, and if you can intercept those pollutions in those rivers right at the stage in a decentralized manner, maybe we allow the rivers to flow clean water into Ganga. So the mistake that we committed was centralization, centralization. of treatment exactly. strategy. And we had now taken today we no, are let me add yeah. we had taken huge treatment plants, which we forgot that the operation and maintenance is the key of any success of the technology. Power was not there. You cannot run the instruments. You cannot run the pumps. They did not work as if. They were created, but there was nothing going into that. Now the thinking is going in to go to natural sources, to decentralize them, to target them properly, and make them small so that it is managed at the community level. So are you hopeful that now onwards we are on the right path and, and uh, see, it will have let, an impact? Let me, let me admit here. See, Ganga has potential to cleanse itself if you don't exceed its assimilation potential. It's a, it's a river which is which is capable of controlling itself, purifying itself. The floods will come and remove it. It's always possible. Our job is to see that, how don't we pollute it? How don't we add solid waste to it? How we do not add unnecessarily waste coming from industrial industries to it? If that happens, Ganga will take care of itself. My, my plan is to see that we target areas where they contribute to a source, which becomes a point source and discharge into now, Are you confident that now we are on the right path? Yes. I am so confident that with the present government's mindset, with the type of pressure that they are putting in, the consultations that they are doing it, and the best part of it is that they are looking at participation of the community and public. See, any mission cannot be successful unless everybody contributes. Science and technology is not the final solution. Science and technology properly operated, properly implemented and properly maintained is the solution. So if you do that with public participation, awareness that they would not discharge unnecessary things into Ganga, they will not offer many floors to Ganga, flowers will come back and will be converted into a value added product. I think this is possible and there is a belief that it can be done. Uh, from Ganga 
to methane. Uh, methane is one of the most important elements for many reasons and recent uh, orbiter which has gone to Mars, we have specifically sent one of the instruments to, to judge whether the methane is there or not and find the tra traces. So, ISRO is working on that end and you are going deep Minded down. Yes. Uh, uh, how important is it to, to find and extract methane from coal? For India? See, it is a natural source. As far as coal bed methane is concerned, it is a major natural source which is available. And it attacks the coal which is not mineable. Any coal which is uh, deeper in the seam at 800 meters or 1200 meters with large reserves of methane in that. Like Do we, we are, have large reserves? We have plenty. It plenty. has been identified. And it could be major source that can be added into oil and natural gas extraction that we are aiming at. Technologies have come impact assessment have been already done, methodologies have been formed up and now we need to go in for an implementation of that plan because it will support our natural resources, fossil fuels which are at a depth of 3000 meters, 4000 meters which we are extracting. So, this new technology that we are talking about, you are confident that we would be probably tomorrow sufficiently um, uh, comfortable. Uh, and, and would not be able to, would not be uh, needing the imports, imports. No, th that cannot be said because our demands are very high, mm -hmm. our reserves are not that many. Oil equivalent if you take, even if you take as much as gas as possible, that only will reduce the burden. But attempt must be made to exploit all resources that we have. In we will not be ever self-sufficient as far as no, no, uh, unless we is Unless concerned. we go in for coal as alternate energy source, where we look at coal gasification as a major source of energy. And that will also come. This country can become self-sufficient in its all resources, but it will take some time. We are we are starting making an effort, and we are heading. And we are heading that. towards this because towards thinking has already gone into the process. Uh, I would like to uh, ask you um, one of the questions that we have been asking every scientist that we have been viewed. When did you encounter moment of eureka in your life? Did you ever? Uh, I, I can't say that because uh, I, I have a mindset where I have never taken anything as a challenge to me or a personal challenge to me. It may have come as challenge to profession, it may have come as anything. But I will tell you that there is always an exit. See, God is so kind that if you sit down, contemplate and you will always find that there is a way out given. Because when he closes one door, he opens another door. Mm -hmm. This is what the mythology says and it is true. It is up to us to see whether I become part of that challenge and get wiped away or a distance, look at it as a third party and find out that can I have an exit from that. Many times it has happened. In one of the projects which I was working, which was a very major project on impact assessment, I did find myself pitched against many people. But I then kept my complete central focus on science and engineering. Because I am basically a scientist and I must not deviate and talk about anything else but science. Any statement I must make must have a support of science and that is what is happening. Otherwise, I have gone through many challenges, many times there is an unsettling conditions, but I have never found myself much of a, a challenge that has come to me while I rose to this level and the, the rise is very smooth. You are an example of a scientist who has never thought of going abroad. And you are an example of a scientist that science in India can be done and you can reach the maximum heights. I, I cannot now, agree more than uh, this. What I would like to ask you is that would you like to give some message other than your personal life to the younger generation? See, I would rather tell younger generation, the first is self-belief. If you have a proper upbringing, right in the young age, if you have right focus at the right time and in the young age only you should increase your transfer value. Assimilate as much knowledge as you can, but try and understand that what you get is only information in the initial stage. What you need is a good guru to convert that information into a knowledge, but just generating it into a knowledge is not good enough. Converting a knowledge into a technology or a product and I would say a quality product. And when I mean quality product, the product is defined as it must not come back. The client should come back. 
whether it is R and D, whether it is a product, whether it is a technology, it must not come back to you. Client must come back and ask for that, yes, I need more. And if you have that type of confidence in you, I am sure this country with such youth available, with such people available, with proper focus will change the country's total scenario on the world. Today I am facing it because 20 institutions abroad, universities have signed MOU with me. I am a participant in every Indo-European program, every country in Europe, Indo-US program, Indo-Australian program, Indo-Japanese program, Indo-Korean program and why they want to come to us? The reason that they believe that there is expertise available, there is an intent available. What you require now is good facilities. Sansadhanu ki jarrut hai, sadhana hai, sansadhan chahiye aur wo mil gaye, to aap dekhe what combination it can make. It will make a big combination. And the scientists and engineers in this country can make this country proud, let me tell you. I have a belief in that. Sadhana and training is going to lead you to success, not only personal success, but a national success. That is what the message that we carry today. If you have any queries, do write to us at Eureka RSTV at gmail.com. We'll come back next week with another fascinating and highly competent scientist to talk to you. Thank you for watching Eureka.